Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the 10th and final video of the Xcode SwiftUI workshop, and the third and final video in the Location Finder application. In this video, we'll be extending that application to plot our found location on a map. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. You can continue on where you left off in the last video using the same project, or you can download the completed project from the link in the description. The final part of this video then is to display a map of the location formed by the longitude and latitude of the place found in our search. Before we do that though, let's do a quick exploration of what it takes in SwiftUI to create a map. And it's extremely easy. So create a new SwiftUI file and call it map view. Maps require a map kit framework, so we'll need to import map kit. To display a map, we'll need a region to display. And this is a class that is available from the MapKit framework, and it's called the MK Coordinate Region class. Now, a region requires a center which is formed by creating a CL location coordinate 2D object that requires a double value for both the latitude and longitude, along with a span, which is an MK coordinate span that provides a delta value from which we can extend our view from the center in both directions. So this must be created as a state property. So let's create one by passing in a, some latitude and longitude of a known location and provide some fixed span value. Now, I like to make my code more readable by separating out arguments by commas like this. So the center requires a CL location coordinate 2D object that requires a latitude and longitude, which are both doubles. So let's separate these arguments too. Let's enter the coordinates for the MPAR state building, and this would be 40.748.4445 for the latitude, and negative 73.9894.536 for the longitude. The span is an MK coordinate span, and we can choose one that specifies deltas from the center. And both of these require a CL location degrees, but this is just a type alias for a double. So we can use a delta of 0.2 for both the latitude delta and the longitude delta. And then to present a map with this region, all we have to do is to create a SwiftUI map view, passing in a region, which is our region but this has to be passed in as a binding, so we'll need a dollar sign. And there you have it, a map centered around the Empire State Building in New York, New York. Now I'd like to use this view in my project, but the problem is our coordinates are going to change, so they can't be fixed like we've done here. So to solve this, I'm gonna create two double properties in our struct for latitude and longitude. In order to fix the preview provider, though, we're going to have to provide some values so we can see what it looks like in our view. And we'll pass in those same longitude and latitude values that we used for the Empire State Building here. Well, the problem we have right now, though, when we pass in the values, when we create this map view from our location finder view, we will get those longitude and latitudes, but we can't use them in this state property right now because it's being created at the same time as our longitude and latitude. So what we do is we create an initializer. Well, the initializer is gonna have those two parameters, longitude and latitude, as doubles, and Xcode automatically generates that initializer for us because it sees that we haven't assigned any initial values to those two properties. So it then will assign the arguments to the properties in our struct. This state property for our map region, however, can't occur before we have our longitude and latitude. 
So we're going to have to move it into the initializer. So we'll create another state property that we'll call map region, which is the MK coordinate region. So that's a duplicate. So the one that we have created is of no use to us. However, what we do create, the instance, is. So we'll just copy that and paste that in when we assign it to the initialized value of the self map region. But of course, we'll need to change those fixed values to our latitude and longitude. So we can now return to our location finder view and use that map kit if we get a valid location info object. So below the text view that presents the location info state, we've already verified that we have location info. We can now present our map view by passing in the location info's longitude and the location info latitude to that map view. Let me add a little padding to this map as well. Let's test this now in the preview canvas. And if I choose Canada again, and then enter my postal code, tap on Get Location, my location information is presented and displayed on the map view. That's where I live. Let's try that US location. That's 90210, Beverly Hills. Let me run this on the simulator right now and see if we can get it to work in the simulator. Let me select Germany. And I see that they have a range ranging from 01067 up through 99998. So let me just pick the first code that they're suggesting in that range. It should work. However, when I tap on the Get Location button, the app crashes, and I jump to my app entry point where it gives me an indication of what the problem is. And it looks like this API is not perfect. What it's actually done is it's returned a longitude of this huge number that's impossible. Longitudes and latitudes have to be between negative 180 and positive 180. So we'll need to catch that error and not cry and create a map if that happens. So we must ensure and provide our SwiftUI a set of coordinates that are actually valid coordinates. So back in location service, inside the fetch location function, we'll check to see if our longitude and latitudes that we've got back are within that range. And if not, we'll create an error. So below where we created our location info, I'm just going to create a range constant that's going to be a range of doubles between negative 180.0 and positive 180.0, using those three dots to enclose those two values. Then we can check to see whether or not our location info's latitude and longitude properties are within that range. And I'm going to do that with a compound comparison using the range contains method. So we can say that does this range contain this latitude and does this range contain the longitude? And if not, I'm going to produce and enter an error into my error string. So if the first is that the range contains the latitude. And since location info is optional, we'll have to use an exclamation mark to unwrap that value. And then the second, using double and, the range contains the location info dot longitude. So even though location info is an optional property, and it's normally not a good idea to force unwrap an object, in this case, we know it exists because we've just made the assignments. So we can safely do that here when we access these two properties. And then we assign that error string if something goes wrong. And we can go back to our location finder view and only display the map if the error string is not nil. So back in the location finder view, we'll only represent that map view if there is no location service error string. So we'll wrap that map view in an if clause and check to see if location service dot error string is equal to nil 
and therefore only present the map view if it is. Now there's one final thing that we have to do though, and that is to make sure that we reset the map if we choose to stay with the same country, yet change the zip or postal code. So in Location Finder, right after the onChange modifier that we have for the selected country, we can create another onChange modifier that watches for changes on the code variable. And that then will perform the location service reset. Now since our onChange modifier resets the code to an empty string, this will then initiate that onChange modifier for the code variable. So we can remove the call to the location services reset from there and use it in the onChange method that watches for changes for the code variable. Now I can choose a country like the United States. Let me find one location by zip code. And then when I change the location to another zip code, the map immediately resets. And then we're able to find the correct location and the map. Well, let me run on the simulator again and first check to see if my location still works. It does. Let me check that German location that gave us a problem before. Ah, I get that red error message, but the place information is still accurate, so it displays it, but not the map because that's where the problem was. If I go to the Czech Republic, I see that the range contains spaces. And remember, we're forming the URL with this, and spaces are not allowed. But we've accommodated that in our code. So let's verify that using the first entry in the range. Excellent. Well, this concludes this application and the series. So I hope you've learned something over these last 10 videos and will be able to use what you've learned in your own projects. If you've enjoyed this series, please leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to get notification of future videos. Follow me also on Twitter and Macedon. Thanks for watching.